And of course, you can turn around and say it's all the same or the same essential property. It doesn't really matter here because we don't see any additional um, buildings. For example, if you were on Young Street, you'd get mixed commercial, residential, and a whole lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. So then you might want to kind of narrow it down the same as essential property. It only allows you up to six, up to last year, so 12 months, right? And that's unfortunately the problem here. And you can turn around and say the price range. I'm going to leave it open. Then I'm going to search in 250. And we're going to see here that within the year, there's 57 sales in this neighborhood, right? In this radius of 250. If there are too many, I will narrow it down if I have to. And I would narrow it down by price most likely. Because if I turn around and I want to search now, it gives me, let me, let me show you this. It gives me a PIN number, it gives me the address, the amount of sale, the date of sale, the lot size, distance from the subject property, meaning from here, and of course, the value per square meter. So if I were now to say, you know, let me see what the pricing looks like if I do the closest ones to the furthest ones. So from close, 26 meters away, to, to 250 meters away. Can you see this? So the closest ones are most likely going to be the ones that are going to have a comparable uh, price if they are the same. So we can see here that you know the black mirrors are in the 468, 425, 445. Right? See these? There's a zero, which means they held the price. Right? They did not reveal it. 470. So it gives you an indication a little bit of, you know what, up to 100 meters around, which is up to here, we know what's going on. If I want to see the lot size, there's a problem here with the lot size that some of them are not really registered, but it's okay because as you can see here, these are 100 county code. I'm actually going this to. This is actually, I think, some are building there. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove all this because it doesn't mean anything to us. So this one and the 170 right now, we will remove because it really has nothing to do with what we want to compare. And I'll show you what that means and what it does. So 100, 100, 100. Are those uh, condo? That's condo. Condo townhouses, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I was looking for condo townhouses, I'd most likely look at those. Now I'm not looking at them because I'm looking at a house. Right? These are all detached. So I will take out all these condo townhouses so I can compare apples to apples. And what it's going to do is just check down here where the neighborhood range starts changing and becoming more and more accurate. And we want it to be very accurate. Instead of eliminating the online one, would we select the property type? You know, if I were to do the same property type. Yeah. Now I'm almost done, so let me not do that just in case we start all over again. You know, because <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't trust the systems 100%. You know, <laughs> they're not the best. <laughs> so here we are. We're almost done. So here we are now, all of a sudden, right? And we are noticing. We're coming very close to what the actual neighborhood, what we're, what we should be looking at. Okay, so here are the the properties, and what I want you to pay attention. We're going to get rid of some of these twos because there are the ones that actually held the price. So I'm going to remove all that. Okay, and you'll see now that I cleaned up, I guess, the data. I noticed that the the neighborhood sale price are between three forty six and five twenty five with an average sale of about 453000 okay, and a deviation of $40,000 plus minus. So if you're in 453 plus minus, it gives you kind of that top and bottom that you should be looking at. Now, we're looking at it without comparing apples to apples. We don't know bedroom. We don't know uh, if it's attached garages, basements finished, or anything like that. But we're very, very close. And here's another thing is that when you turn around and you look at the last column, which is the, the dollars per square meter, you're going to get a very accurate figure of what is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, square meter of the lot or of the house? Mm -hmm. The lot. Okay. So the first thing that you have to do 
is just take a look, go back, because this is going to stay. Remember which one we looked at. So your square meter, your area here, is 685 square meters for that property. Okay, so we are looking at comparables at that. So a 685 is 63 by 131. So we're looking at properties that are 63 or close to that, 60 by 130 on average. So let's go back to the neighborhood sales, right? And I hope it keeps it. It should. So I'm going to go back and find, sorry, the lot size, right? I hope it didn't, oh, it shows everything again. So I'm going to find the 650s. As we can see, they're not even close to that, a lot of these. Ooh, one second. I guess we chose the biggest one. Yeah, right? See that? We chose the biggest one. Because all these other ones are smaller, as you can see here. Right? So this is really... <laughs> the largest one in the neighborhood because we pulled out 5,700 properties almost and this is still the largest by size, right? The other ones might be 50s, 40s, 30s, and going down. And this is what I, I meant by lot size. So you want to compare apples to apples. Let's get rid of this too. So as you can see here, the bigger the lot size, the lower the price per square meter. The smaller the lot size, these move up to 1,000, right? Some of these are going to be higher up. So remember that. Because smaller lots are always, uh, more people like them, right? Because they can afford them. It'll pay a little bit higher up to get into it. Whereas the bigger the lot, the bigger the house, it will bring most likely the price down because there's not that many buyers for it. Okay? It's not sure that the construction would be the same because it would be much on a bigger lot, the construction would be less. True. You know what? The thing is, though, that you compare now by square meter. So we don't compare with what they put in the house if they put gold, yeah. right? Because a lot of them will not get that. You understand? The return on what the, the owner does to the property sometimes is not what they get back. Do they build it for themselves? You know what? Good luck. You know what? If they put pink walls and, <coughs> and pink marble. I've been into a house where he still wanted to put, you know, sell it for $2 million and had pink marble all over the place. He brought it from Italy. Well, if I can't find an old fellow that's Italian that likes pink marble, that house is not going to sell. Everything has to be ripped out. Eventually, it sold for, I think, 1.1 million, 1 million less than it was asking for, right? In the neighborhood of two and a half. Because they needed another half a million, 700,000 to rebuild that. Okay? So what I'm trying to get to here is that this, this uh, comparison is very accurate. And you'll see that, that it gives you a range of dollars per square meter that you can depend on. So try to stick with that. If you wanted to avoid all the comparables that the CMA does, right? The TREV, you can go with this one. It's still the same amount of information. This information, they can interpret it that well. And it allows you, you know, as an agent, to be different from everybody else. Many people do not present this report. And I'll show it to you. If you come here now and you just click on the enhanced report right here, you, you, can ex you can include demographics. Sometimes demographics really pay a, uh, play a role because you want to focus on the target market. So you can use it in your marketing and say, listen, in this area we have this specific, you know, 40% people are of this nationality. These are who we're going to be targeting. This is what we're going to be advertising it to. And that just builds your case. If you don't want that, you just uncheck it and you just say preview. Now you get a fantastic, a beautiful report, which I love, and I always use this. It has a geo warehouse, all the information, right? Street view, your picture, and everything else. The square, the area, right? The assessed value, when they bought it, 1990. And of course, all the comparisons. And what I would do, I'm gonna close it once more. I will actually just click the distance. That's very important here. The distance from close to far, see that? And I will take out all the zeros, all the twosies, and all that kind of stuff. Let's do it right now. If we do same as subject property and we searched, 18 results. Okay. So now that we have, we're going to take away the two. Let me do dollar value. Beautiful. Two and zero. Do we have anything else? No, I don't think so. Beautiful. So now I have a way more accurate. I'm going to do the enhanced report one more time. Preview. I would 
would sort this by This is how you really should have it. Good. So by distance, and you'll start noticing these prices. So you'll go back and say, okay, why did 20 Mirabel sell for $1,100 a square meter? So then you can go to the MLS farming property and figure out why it sold for that, right? And justify it that way. But all of them you're going to see it's between 940 and 1,000. So I would really go for that price. The bigger the lot, the 530s, the less they are. So now we're going to the 840s per square meter. Don't forget, we have a 650, where is it? Here it is, 685 square meter lot, double lot, right? And of course, the subject price ranges, a location map, and everything else. Beautiful report, you print it out, four pages. It allows you to do the talking. What you don't want in a situation is where you sit down in front of a client, right, somebody who's gonna list their property, and just go, here you go, here's the paper. Because then you lost the conversation. You lost everything. You start, they start looking at your paperwork, they're not paying attention to you. They're coming to their own conclusion. They pick up this, they still can't figure it out. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's, it's not, don't obscure things to make it difficult. It's because you want to keep control of everything that you talk about. But when they say, well, why did 20 Mirabel sell? Then you turn around and say, well, that one there had that difference, right, specifically. That's why it was different, and that's why that's the price range. So you can come up, and this is very nice to include, very simple. You know what, you can uh, let them talk more, right? And that's the way you should be conducting your business presentations about it. Any questions? Is this clear? Like, do you like what you've seen? Who's been doing this already? Beautiful. Very nice. How we convert the covered area? The covered area? Yeah. What do you mean? Coverage? Like on the lot? No, no site. <laughs> the construction. Constructed area. The only way you can do it, and it's not going to be for homes, is if you went into. Um, Assessment, or you can do it through here too. When you go into the uh, impact, you can purchase a report, mm -hmm. but it would be most likely only for uh, commercial. That you can do. Oh. But I don't for homes. There is no need for homes. For no homes. For no need for no, I don't think they're submitted anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Plans and all that. Yeah. Any questions? Are you okay with this information? Everybody's good? Did you find it useful? Yeah. yeah? Very good. Beautiful. Very good. We're here. Anything you want, you know? We're yes, doing sir. a commercial.